OK, hello and welcome back. We will eventually be striking some mark, but I need to tell you about handling metal. Um, just be careful because it can be sharp, especially if you're digging in skips to get some scrap for some practice. These gloves are for manual handling and use them. Don't cut your hands open. OK, so there's plenty of reference manuals that you can download off the internet, PDFs and such like. This is probably one of the best. It's Wills Helmson Ship Services a Welding Manual Handbook, and it is yo thick. It took about four reams of paper to get this printed, but it is an excellent reference if you're really going to get deep into uh, welding techniques. Now, I'll just quickly show you this and the PDF that you can download. If you just do a little search for it, it will cover the welding processes. Um, we're going to be looking at stick welding first of all. And it will give you, uh, well, basically an overview of uh, welding equipment, plus it goes into descriptions of your codes for um, electrodes, for instance, which can get a little bit complicated, but it does explain it very, very clearly. This one here is the uh, probably the, the simplest one, and this is from BOC, Fundamentals of Manual, Manual Metal Arc Welding. It shows you some of the faults that you can, um, come across when you're welding uh, plus the positions it is actually um, very very useful and you can find this on the internet and download it as well it's only about eight pages long good book here which uh, you can buy off amazon it's not actually cheap it's about 30 pounds uh, weldability by uh, sif it covers welding techniques very basically and it also goes into the health and safety for professionals now it does talk about engineering which is important um, you guys obviously can read drawings, I hope. I did, I learnt this at school, technical drawings. However, young ones, they might struggle. Now, I can just quickly look at it and think, yeah, okay. But I have a son here who is interested at the moment in diagnostics. He's got an ABS sensor to do, so he won't be welding just yet. His uh, grandfather's brother, actually, this is his book, he used to be a welder, rest his soul. That's a 1939 edition of uh, arc welding. What we have to understand with arc welding is the coding of the electrodes. Now, this is an E6013, which is a very common or a general purpose welding electrode. This is a fresh pack that we've got and I want to show you what electrodes look like when they've been in a damp shed and they've gone discoloured and you can see this, they're not the right colour. These are very patchy and they're not worth welding with, so straight in the bin. Okay, where I put my rods is at home on a shelf inside where it's not too hot and it's not too humid. One could get quite serious with the coding of uh, electrodes and you can see here that the, uh, the codings, the N codings, AWS codings can be a little bit confusing and it's, to be honest with you, it's a little bit too much. So we'll do something a little bit simpler. Uh, basically the uh, 6013 electrode, the description is it's a premium quality electrode for general structural and sheet metal work in all positions, including vertical down and using low carbon steels. You'll uh, know it better as the stuff that we weld with, which is called mild steel. So cut to the chase, E6013 uh, is a pretty good rod. E means electrode, 60 is the uh, tensile strength or the resistance to tensile stress, and it is actually quite high. 1 means all positions when welding, we'll talk about that, and 13, which a combination of the last two numbers, is AC and DC um, usable. If we then look at another one, uh, E7018, E is electrode and 70 is a higher tensile strength or resistance to tensile stress. One is for all positions of welding and 18, now this is where it differs, used with AC and DC uh, machines and it's a coating with a low hydrogen content. Unfortunately, these rods do need special treatment because they need to be dried and they need to be kept hot until you're welding. In the last video, or part three, I showed you that you can actually DC weld by turning the, uh, 
the cables round. Now, there's a lot to this, so I'm going to introduce it slowly into the video series, but basically I'll tell you that DC welding is uniform, continuous flow of current to maintain a smooth welding. Now, DC negative is preferred for thin material and for maximum penetration. Now, this is good for uh, welding pipe and burning through. Now, listen to this, rust and mill scale and materials that are not easily removed from the surface of the metal. Mill scale is the grey stuff that you find on fresh steel from uh, the engineers. DC welding, however, can cause arc blow. Now, I'd advise you to Google this and find out about it. So what we'd be using at higher amperages is a C and that is also for larger electrodes obviously. Selecting your electrode diameter will depend on the thickness of your steel. Now if you look at the second line down that's 2 to 5 millimeter thickness of steel plate will require an electrode of a diameter of 3.2 millimeters. I went to the engineers and I got them to cut some steel up. Uh, basically, he didn't have 5mm, which was preferable. That's what it says in the engineering drawing, it's something like 4.7. This is actually a 4mm thick, so we're going to go for a uh, 3.2 rod. Uh, I don't know if you see me measure that. And I need to just write it on here to remember how thick this metal is. And I'll put on there, just for your reference, it's 3.2mm rod. Just to save myself some work, because cutting um, square is a bit harder to do, I got the engineers to cut this and supply, which was uh, 15 pounds sterling. The steel I've just shown you is basically for the uh, LT230T transfer box. It's basically a transmission jack sling, so you can get the uh, transmission box at the right angle to fit it in your motor and you can see that we have here the plans that a Land Rover have supplied for us. Now this is on a PDF and it's uh, downloadable. Uh, the information, all the information you need to know, if you don't know what steel you need to know, to know just give uh, a copy of this to your engineers to cut the metal. Obviously you can drill the holes yourself. This is where the cost comes in engineering or going to an engineering works. So, like I did, I just had the metal cut. It's, it's cheap. So, basically, you Google Land Rover manuals and LandRoverWeb.com. Drop onto there. This is where I'm going to show you where to get the workshop manual from. And what you need to do, scroll down. It's not on every workshop manual. But the one that's probably the easiest to do is look for the Defender 90 110 workshop manual. And that will be part three. So, you click through onto there. And uh, once it's loaded, this will obviously say a gearbox, five-speed gearbox and transfer box. This is the one you're looking for. Now, there are quite a few gearboxes in this workshop manual. And if you just bear with me here, I'll scroll down. And then I'll show you that you also have a templates for um, different gearbox slings as well. So there are quite a few plans here. Now, I'll just cut a little bit because it's a lot of scrolling down. You have another one for the LT... Um, 85 and this will give you dimensions and show you where to weld and put bolts for it and then if we scroll down further you'll find on page 86 you have the um, plans here it has the information you need as I said don't drill the holes you can do those at home yourself if you have a big enough uh, drill set but basically you can tell the engineer that you just want the plate so you can weld them up. I've also laminated this because I'm terrible at paperwork. I've laminated so it doesn't get damaged. But we will be welding this. I've just got to go through a few more things with stick welding because uh, the details are really important. The next video I'll, I'll talk about the amperage to the size of rod. And you have a current range. For instance, 3.2 will be a current range between 110 and 130. It does vary, and this is all to do with how you're actually welding. And the welding positions, as you can see here, there's a description of the flat fillet, horizontal, vertical, vertical down and overhead. And we will have to cover these because it's important. The position on your welding will determine how your voltage is and how you're going to weld. If you get it wrong, you'll find that you have problems with your weld, so it's worth covering and uh, getting this right.
So bear with me. I know it's a bit tedious, some of this theory work, but for uh, electrode uh, manual metal out welding, it's important you get the theory well nailed. <laughs> 